Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, depending on where you're joining from. Uh, my name is Matthias Keck. I'm the coordinator of the Agroecology TPP, and it's my big pleasure to welcome all of you to today's really exciting webinar on launching the One Million Voices Initiative digital um, citizen science platform on agroecology. Um, without further ado, I would pass the mic over to Fergus Sinclair, Chief Scientist at C4 Ecraft and co-convener of the Agroecology TPP. Once again, welcome everyone. And uh, just a few, sorry, before handing over to, to Fergus, um, please, for any questions or comments you have, please kindly use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And um, if you have a question specifically directed to any individual of the, the panelists, ideally kindly point that out so we know exactly whom you would like to address that question. Um, you, we, we do offer interpretation in Spanish and French. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see that little globe basically offering interpretation options kindly choose the language you feel most comfortable with and also when posing questions on the Q&A function please feel free to use French or Spanish if you have another language of choice uh, like Brazilian Portuguese for instance um, you are obviously very very welcome to use that as well um, it might reduce the amount of people who can read it but as we're working with the wonderful people of Agroecology Map I'm sure they're um, very happy to respond respond to any questions and comments in Portuguese as well. I was going to introduce each of the panelists as they're speaking, um, but let's just quickly use that time to, to introduce the panelists one by one. So uh, our first panelist would have been Fergus Sinclair, Chief Scientist of C4 ECRAF and co-convener of the Agroecology TPP, giving introductory remarks. Then Lisa Fuchs, um, uh, social, science, uh, social Systems and Engagement Scientist at C4 ECRAF and Scientific Coordinator of the TPP, um, would introduce you to how the One Million Voices Citizens Plan and citizen science platform was built and what the rationale behind it was, which actors were involved. And then um, we would like to pass over the floor to Eduardo Fernandez Formigieri and Marcelo Suarez Sosa, both co-founders of the Agroecology Map. And all of you who are um, active on social media and are interested in agroecology have certainly seen how active the uh, wonderful people from Agroecology Map are on, on social media. And it's such an exciting moment for us to join forces. We, we have been in touch for a long time. And now this launch of this citizen science platform made for the ideal moment to more actively work together and um, combine a lot of different efforts that the TPP and the Agroecology Map have in terms of showing the world where agroecology is happening, what's exciting about it, what people can reach with it, and combining it now with this citizen science component. Now I'm seeing Fergus, Sharp and Claire. So... Um, I would like to then introduce the remaining panelists who are of crucial importance to the development and further um, application of, of this citizen science platform later on to not bore you with too many names at a time. So Fergus, welcome and we're ready for your welcome remarks. Please go ahead. Thank you. And sorry, I um, got um, uh, an internet outage, so uh, 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 was away for a, for a moment. But welcome everybody to what is a really um, exciting event today. Um, it was well over a year ago that Michelle Evacua, who was uh, Manfred's um, predecessor at SDC, um, really challenged us to come up um, with a citizen science uh, um, project for uh, agroecology for the TPP. And it's really important because at the beginning of setting up this transformative partnership platform on agroecology, one of the key issues was that we needed to be doing research differently. And particularly, involving local knowledge and local people, um, indigenous people um, in uh, the way in which research is done. And so this citizen science initiative is all about doing that. 
And that's why we, we gave the title to this launch, Whose Science Is It Anyway? Because it, it's really significant and important. Who is deciding what science we do, how it's done, who's collecting in the information, who's assessing it, evaluating it, interpreting it, um, on what basis is agroecology being taken forward? And is that basis equitable um, in with respect to different people's perspectives, knowledge, um, and, and input? So it's really significant that we've got to a stage after a lot of, of inclusive consultation, and you'll hear all about it um, in the other presentations about how um, this program has gone about consulting with people to work out what is it that can be done collectively um, in citizen science. And let me say, this is just the beginning. So we're starting um, um, with this platform, and we hope that this will be um, um, the gateway to us beginning to interact um, really um, fully with farmers, with uh, other food system actors uh, um, around the world um, in order to be uh, setting the agenda for the agroecology science bottom up uh, rather than top down. And so uh, um, I'm really excited to, to see uh, all of the progress has been made. It's wonderful to see Irish uh, on the panel today because um, AFA has been one of the, the really strong um, uh, supporters of um, this citizen science initiative right from the, the, the beginning when it was first uh, mooted. Um, and so I very much hope that it's meeting your expectations and that we can continue to do that um, um, as we go on. And the last thing um, that I want to say, because I can see that Matthias is getting uh, worried that my five minutes is, is, is running out. Um, the, the, the last thing I, I, I want to say is that, that, you know, it's not been that easy, you know, just to, to uh, uh, get things moving with a truly inclusive uh, citizen science program. But what it has done for, for the TPP is connected us much, much more strongly with the farmer organizations and civil society organizations that are part uh, of the TPP. And so I think it's been a really wonderful initiative. And I'd really like to thank uh, SDC Manfred, um, um, who's representing us now, but uh, uh, Michelle before, who pushed us down this line uh, in a way which I think is being hugely productive. We're just at the beginning, I think, of, of a long journey, um, but I think it's a really exciting beginning, uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting into the detail. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you very much, Fergus. Exciting indeed. And um, with these wonderful words, you're, you're fully allowed to take a bit more than five minutes, no problem at all. Um, I think you're fully right. Being transdisciplinary and being transformative is not always easy, but it's very exciting. So let's hear from Lisa, um, the project lead for, for the One Million Voices Initiative and a scientific coordinator of the TPP um, on how this tool has been developed, who has been engaged and what it looks like now. So please go ahead, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias, and thank you all for being here today. So as Matthias said, I would like to speak today about how we built this inclusive citizen science platform for agroecology that we call the One Million Voices platform. Um, Fangas just spoke about the dream that was at the beginning of the initiative, and it gave rise to this initiative, if you will, the dream um, dreamt by Michelle Eviko from, from SDC. Um, so the initiative itself has an objective to develop a citizen science tool, as Fangas said that really has several sub-objectives, if you will, that really wants to achieve different things. It wants to enable all users to inclusively participate in agroecology movements. It wants to support sustainable adoption of agroecology, and it wants to contribute to the collection, co-creation, sharing of information to address key knowledge gaps on the performance of agroecology. But what is citizen science? We, we talk about citizen science. Many of us have an idea, but what is citizen science? 
And there are many different answers to that. But at the very basis, citizen science is a practice that involves citizens or non-professionals, non-experts that are involved in the production of new scientific knowledge that overall have the aim to make the world a better place. So many of us have interacted with citizen science before, are familiar with, it, with citizen science, but the question that we're trying to uh, address through this initiative really is how we can make citizen science work to support agroecology and agroecological transformation. So the process that we have taken as a, a team and the steps that we have taken towards realizing the dream of the One Million Voices for Agroecology was that first of all, after we had worked a lot and had received a lot of support from, from um, the Zurich Citizen Science Center to really understand what citizen science entails and what different components are relevant for citizen science. We started by conducting a global review of existing citizen science initiatives that are relevant to agroecology. We did that um, to really understand what is there and what is what could usefully inspire us as we are trying to build this new initiative and to really understand as well where the gaps are that we could use as opportunities for our new initiative. Um, we have just finalized the working paper on that. That will be released next week, as far as I know. Um, it also entails five core recommendations that really inspired us on the further conceptualization of, of the initiative itself as well. Then further steps, and they, they were done concurrently, was really, as Vaga said as well, to build very strong partnerships. Some of the partnerships were already existing, as for example, with, with the Asian Farmers Association, AFA, um, a, a long-term um, partner and member of the TPP. But we also built new partnerships, um, for example, with the AFSA member, Groundswell International, um, also with the facilitator of the McKnight Anders um, Community of Practice, um, and then also very strong, we also drew very strongly on, on previous work and, and, and the involvement of our ECRAF staff in the agroecological revolution, really, in Andhra Pradesh and, and beyond that in India. So what we did like through this creation of the networks is that we first uh, developed a joint outline for how we could conduct um, dialogues in those different regions and then held those dialogues. And the dialogues had various components, but also it included to first of all, like, step down this review, if you will, to, to um, complement the global review with the regional review. So we, we understood more about regionally existing and relevant initiatives, citizen science initiatives, but then had this very strong component and direct engagement to really understand what the participants specific interest um, are for a new citizen science initiative. And important to mention here is that we were very deliberate from the onset in, in building those strong relationships and not only with individual actors, but, but really with strong networks. Um, and you can also see that, for example, in, in the representation of the countries from, from which um, different organizations were involved in, in, in those dialogues, because all of the um, partners with whom we worked on this um, basically have regional networks that span, um, span several countries in, in their specific regions. Um, so we did that. And the dialogue results and the regional review and, and all of the, the data, if you will, that, that came from that um, will be published also in, in, in some time later. But for today, in, in this very exciting day, what I want to speak about and what I want to concentrate on is really this question of the pr priority co-creation that then led to the actual platform that we are launching today. Um, so citizen science fundamentally really starts with the research question. As I said, we spent a lot of time and, and received a lot of support, especially from the Citizen Science Center in Zurich, to really understand what citizen science entails. But one of the fundamental things is that beyond all kinds of other things that citizen science does, it really tries to respond to a very targeted research question. So defining a research question that is relevant in the context of citizen science supporting agroecology was a fundamental part of the dialogues that we held as well. And so I briefly want to show you, and I hope you're, you're not getting startled by this table. Um, I briefly want to show you an overview of the core results, if you will. And of course, this is curated data, um, but of the core results that came out from the different dialogues. You can see at the bottom um, the different color distribution for where the different topics emerged. Um, and, and you can see them here on the, in the table as well. But what, what matters is that we had different, but also similarities in, in, in what came out in terms of the research questions that are really of interest in the different regions. And in total, you can see, like, if you look at the, the boxes, if you will, at the lines, you can see that we had six main research questions that were really prioritized through those dialogues. Um, so first of all, the question of who is practicing agroecology and who is organizing, who is participating, who is doing stuff, who is 
who's who's moving with agroecology. Second, which local practices are being implemented specifically in different areas? Number three, which local scientific practices are being used, local scientific methods, um, to, to understand more about, about the practices? Number four, which sustainable business models exist in the context of agroecology? Number five, what is the impact that agroecology has on various outcome areas? And you can see um, impact on climate change adaptation, impact on livelihoods in the environment, impact on food quality and nutrition, impact on soil fertility. So different elements came out in the different dialogues, but really this question of what it does agroecology do and what can it achieve? And then there were also research, um, research questions that were more around documenting climate change effects and, and climate information, etc. So we came with this and then as a team, we came back together and really started this co-creative priority setting, if you will. So the idea really was, okay, so we have this, this diversity of different interests and different research questions that can be addressed, but which ones of those really directly feed agroecology and feed agroecological transformation um, and which ones can allow us to build an initiative or to build a tool, which was the objective, right? It can allow us to build a tool that is both globally relevant, but also locally pertinent, if you will. Um, yes. So uh, this is um, our, our results so far. Um, what we also discussed in, in through the various dialogues and also a result from the global review was that despite the fact that there are analog versions and analog ways to do citizen science in our context, it is very useful to have a digital tool. So we decided for many reasons that it was important that we would have a digital tool that is both uh, web-based but also a phone application. Um, yes, so then in, in terms of the joint priority co-creation, we settled to start really with three main elements. So the first element here related to this priority, um, the second priority that I had presented is this question of who implements which agroecological practices around the world. And in connection to that, how are they characterized? How do we know if they are agroecological? How do we know which, which elements, which components, which system components it addresses? So this is the first part that we really want to address through, through our initiative. The, the second one is this question of impact. So how are they evaluated and how is their impact evaluated? We have some elements in terms of outcome areas that, that um, were mentioned in, in the dialogues, but we, we know that there are numerous areas through which agroecology is often analyzed and looked at. So we really wanted to ensure also that we are able to have varied experience that people using different agroecological practices around the world can have and can share um, through, through this platform. And then lastly, the third element, very strongly, as you can tell, like most, most concern really and most interest um, emerging from the dialogues really was around this idea who, of who participates and who collaborates. So to really ensure that whatever platform we're developing really allows for exchange, connectivity, mobilization. So this is the this is the the outline, if you will, and based on that, we then really developed um, a very specific concept note and 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 involved a lot of additional people. We had a lot of rounds and rounds of 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 engagements around this to really ensure that we're developing something that is sensible, that is a value add, that really is likely to support agroecology, that is likely to to respond to the recommendations also that we made in the global review in terms of motivating people to participate, being inclusive, et cetera, et cetera. And today we're finally at this point where we are proudly introducing the One Million Voices for Agroecology or One Million Voices of Agroecology platform. Um, I'll very briefly only introduce it now and later we will see more details about it. But this is the basic interface um, that you will see, and you will also see the link that I'm pasting, um, that I pasted here on the on the slide. So jointly with the team from Agroecology Map, that Matthias already introduced earlier as well, and that you have seen um, on the participants today, um, we developed this specific platform that we call the One Million Voices of Agroecology platform. The platform itself has three main functions of three main features, if you will. So first of all, and you can see the colors are the same as on the buttons here. So you, you can follow also how it is translated on the main interface. What you're seeing is the home page of the, of the um, platform. You can first of all register and map a location where you practice agroecology. Second, you can share practices. 
you can share which practices you implement. You explain specifically what you're doing. You can characterize the practices that you have. You can evaluate them against various set criteria with both um, open-ended um, answer um, opportunities, but also closed answer opportunities for, for ease of, of, of filling the, the answers. And you can acknowledge your knowledge sources. You can refer to the kind of knowledge that, that inspired you to, to engage in the practice. You can also share material if you want to, if you have, mit, if you have videos, uh, manuals, whatever it is, you can also share that there's a possibility. There's a possibility to upload pictures and there's a possibility to map various practices under individual locations. Practices here again, I would like to say that as well, is not only on-farm practices, but it is designed deliberately to also differentiate between whether it is farming-related practices or non-farming-related practices. And all the questions are, are phrased in a way that it is not it, it is not biased towards one or the other side necessarily. And then lastly, the, the third main feature for us is really this connectivity element. So the, the possibility of discovering the map, um, in reading through the different um, things that people have uploaded. We have um, various filters that you can find in the practice tab, but also in the connect, connect tab. So if you're interested, for example, in, in, in practices that specifically address specific subsystem components, for example, that um, address specific agroecological practices, you can filter for that. You can filter for geographical um, representation, if you will. You can combine different filters to to really make sure that you can see what other people do in line with the things that interest you. And beyond being able to access other people's information, to see their pictures and, and to, to be able to filter their data, you can also comment on what they do. You can interact with people through, through their practice pages and, and, and in this comment function. And through that, you can exchange and mobilize and really jointly participate in agroecology. So this is the, the basic features of the, of the platform. And um, obviously, I'm encouraging you all to to go to the page and and read more about it. We have an about um, tab in the in the um, on the website, and it also really like explains to you very briefly again. Also, for example, what we believe the benefits are for for various groups of people in in using the platform. Um, yes. So just very briefly. And as as Vaga said, this is just the beginning. So we have we have done rounds and rounds of testing, and now we are at the stage where we are finally allowing real data to be uploaded on the on the portal to really make sure that people interact with each other based on real lived experiences. So this is the map feature, and you can see up there there's um there's the map that you can click on, and then on the map you see like small leaves being placed in in places where people have registered locations. Then on, on this still on the map feature, you can, for example, click on those small icons to see just brief summary information about that. You will also see on the menu up there that next to the map is the location overview. And then, for example, you have the practice overview. This I, I took this yesterday, so by now there's there's more. And um, you can see the overview specifically of the different practices just in general like when you click on the practice overview. But then you can click on specific practices and you can start reading the details about that specific practice. And, and you will see this, this sub menu here where you see the different components that I just introduced. So the explanation of what it is, the characterization, the evaluation, the acknowledgement, the gallery. Etc. And you can can do this like for all the different ones. And as I said, there's a lot of possibilities for connection and adding different elements as well. Um, yes, what I did not say also is that we have a an, an brief introduction to what the location is to also really foster this idea that agriculture is systemic, that is not just one thing that people are doing, that it is also many different things coming together. Um, yes. So with that, I am done for now. Um, and I would like to um, finish with a call for action. Please register, share, learn, exchange through the platform, support others in your networks to use the platform. I said we we try to make it as inclusive as possible. And there's, we, we really worked on the language. One important thing as well is that there's very few fields only that are mandatory to fill. So if someone does not have time or does not feel comfortable or does not feel like that is the kind of level of engagement that they want to put in, it is possible to register with very limited information. You can register a place, you can register a practice, and you can briefly explain what the practice is, and that is it. But if people are interested in really putting in much more reflection, sharing much more of their experiences, it is possible. If, if you're in a position to support others in your network, to access the platform, to share what they do, please help them and make the world understand and see what, what beautiful things people are able to do. Yes, and please do share your experiences with us to really foster continuous improvement of the platform. We very much look forward to, to your involvement. 
So yes, going back to the dream, let's realize the dream together. Thank you. And just very last slide, as I said, please do get in touch with me or any other member of the team. Please visit the project website. And of course, please go to the platform, start using the platform right away, register away, interact and enjoy it. I'm, I'm really grateful to the colleagues from Agroecology Map who have made it a beautiful, beautiful platform. Um, and a very big thanks to all of our partners, some of which you see listed here. And I would just really like to extend a special special note of thanks to, to Rosie Mondadini from the Citizen Science Center in Zurich, who has really helped us and really guided us through the entire process. Thank you. And with that, I hand it back to Matthias. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. That's that's great, wonderful. And it was really nice to hear how, how that all came about. And I'm very happy that both you and Fergus really pointed out the absolute importance of, of working through partnerships from the, the ground up, basically. And I'm very happy you finished with a call to action and a call to engage, because after all, we're, we're presenting something today, but this will dynamically continue to evolve and uh, let's make it as much as possible a co-design process and citizen science of course only works if we all participate so please do register please do spread the word but now we we will hear a bit more about what the platform actually looks like and um, how it is nicely integrated with other aspects that um, Agroecology Map are, are working on. And I think this is absolutely exciting because it, it really brings so many interesting things together. So I would like to hand it over to Marcelo Suarez Sosa, um, co-founder of Agroecology Map, and Eduardo Fernandez Formigueri is also with us, but he said that uh, Marcelo will probably be doing most of the talking and um, Eduardo is there to correct Marcelo if he's not happy with um, yeah. with what, what Marcelo has been saying. So please go ahead, Marcelo. Welcome. That's correct. Thank you, Matthias. And usually I'm, tech, I'm a technical guy, but uh, this is a different day. Uh, I wrote some words to, to say, a few words. Uh, at first, I would like to start my speaking by thanking the entire team that made this possible, Eduardo, Rodrigo, Murilo, Vitoria, Lisa, Fabio, Sergio, Irish, and many others. Furthermore, I would like to thank all those who work with agroecologists, campesinos and campesinas, indigenous, and small farmers. You are my heroes here. I did, I do what I do because I believe in all the people who do agroecology. We didn't get together by chance, us from Agriculture Map and One Million Voices. Many, many of the One Million Voices ideas resonate far and wide, and we know ideas when planted together go strong to become reality. While Agriculture Map and One Million Voices are two different platforms, they complement each other. I believe we have so many things to do together. In your partnership, ideas converged, and we are no longer two groups. We are communities united and united by ideals. That's what agriculture is for me, a mutual aid system in constant evolution. Agriculture is a community. We seek to walk the same path in different ways, and so we help each other on this world. And I believe to get together, we are stronger. We are here together to share and co-create ours. This platform is like an open book, humbly helping to share ideas among all those who want a more agroecological world. In this universe of agroecology, solidarity, partnership, and friendship are our seeds of hope. I call out to everyone, let's work together. You know, this platform, this idea is not just for research, no, it's, it's, it's for all the campesinos and campesinas, the peasants, indigenous peoples and small farmers. It's from it's for it for from everyone. For all like me who lives in the global south parts of the world, for all those who believe in agriculture. Uh, I need to say that uh, I, I, I'm very happy and very glad to to to, to, to share some 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 of my knowledge. I, I, I don't I, I, like I said I'm a, a technical guy and I'm a soft developer, but I deeply believe that agriculture is is the way to go. It's the way we can change this world, we can uh, promote, we can drive and, and, and do uh, better. Uh, I, I like to say thank you to all, obrigado a todos, muchas gracias a todos, and, and that's it. Thank you, Matias. 
Thank you very much, Marcelo. Very, very true words from the heart. Thanks so much. Uh, Eduardo, would you like to add something? No, no, it's just a just few minutes. I will keep here for the <coughs> queue and for the question and answers. If you need me, I'm here. I think Marcelo talked the essence of our thinking. And that's it. Great. We have a lot of to thank to a lot of people. We are happy to work together and let's go change the world. Let's do that. Thanks so much. And for everybody listening, do check out the social media um, accounts from, from Agroecology Map. Extremely active, really highlighting what agroecology is all about. Thank you so much. Okay, now um, we have the great pleasure of getting to know a bit more what the platform looks like in practice. What does it look like when we actually enter data and what opportunities do we have? So um, I would like to hand it over to Fabio Ricci, whom um, you've seen already in the very beginning. He's the wonderful um, communication specialist of the TPP and Global Project Communications Coordinator at C4ICRAF. And I believe you prepared a lovely video for us. Um, Fabio, please go ahead. Yep, I'm launching it now. Thanks. About the 1 million voices of agroecology. Now, this is an online tool uh, or platform where can, you can uh, browse or actually or even input your agroecological practices. So first thing you want to type 1 million voices .org, and you arrive on this uh, web page and you'll see there are three buttons on the home page. There's the discover the map, register a location and share your practices. So uh, quickly you can see uh, across the map in the globe and you can browse the globe, uh, the different agroecological practices. You can click on it. You can, uh, uh, everything is browsable and you can investigate what is happening in the different locations. Um, uh, you can also browse the different locations with this tab, with this uh, button, or also uh, look at the agroecological practices. There's a connect function, which allows you to connect with the different users and also filter by different parameters. So uh, this is uh, a tool that you can use freely. And uh, of course, um, if you don't have a, uh, an account, you can only browse, but once you log in or you sign up, then you can also do many other things. So uh, just before before I, I get into that, I just want to go through the about section. There's uh, a bit of a um, explanation on what is the One Million Voices uh, Initiative, which is a project uh, by the Agroecology TPP. Uh, what is the agroecology map uh, and we'll discuss this uh, also during the webinar and uh, how is this platform beneficial to the different users including yourself and what happens to the data uh, in particular that it's hosted under a creative common license uh, by ncsa uh, 4.0 um, but you also have a forthcoming manual and uh, um, a bit about the people who are behind this research um, and finally a thank you note with our partners and uh, the tools we use for developing this platform okay so let's get started uh, first thing you want to sign up i already did this part so i'm not going to redo it but what happens is once you sign up and you uh, agree to the fact that the non-personal data is shared uh, through this common cre creative common license so, uh, you receive an email, which is this one here, which I got a few minutes ago, and you confirm, you click on confirm, and finally you can log in. Once you've confirmed, you can actually go here, log in, and you can put your 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 email and your password. Okay, and then <clears throat> you're signed up and it brings you to the last page where you were. I was in the uh, uh, thank you note page, but of course, if you were in home, it will bring you back at the home. <clears throat> and <clears throat> apologies. So first thing you, you want to do before you can share an agroecological practice, you have to say where it happens, where it's, where it's located. So you want to save a location. So I'm going to save uh, my location. So I'm going to uh, call it, uh, and you can copy paste, which is what I'm doing. I'm copy pasting from a document. I'm going to call it Fabius Terrace. Country is going to locate you 
uh, depending on where you know where your IP address is, it already locates me in Italy, which is good because I'm in Italy, so I don't need to change this. Now, is it a farm? Now, this is interesting because, uh, of course, I don't have a farm. Uh, I'm not a farmer, so I would put no. But before I put no, I want you. I want to show you that um, when, if you do have a farm, you can actually uh, characterize the farm with a number of. Um, parameters like crops, animals, I have fish, uh, there's trees, there's no trees. What is the purpose of your farm? Mainly home consumption or mainly commercial or both or I'm not sure. Every time you see a uh, red asterisk, it means that the field is required, <clears throat> but there are very, very few fields required in this uh, tool. All the rest is um, uh, subject to your will. If you want to input more data, you can do that or even not. Uh, okay, so let me go back. I don't have a farm, so I'm going to put no and those fields disappear. <clears throat> then you have other questions like what is the dream future of your farm? And, you know, if you have a photo of your, I don't have a photo of my terrace, but okay, uh, you can put it, you can put a description of the location. You can decide whether this location appears on the global map or not. I'm going to uh, keep a no, which means I'm not going to hide it. Uh, people are going to be able to see it. And then you can actually put your location on the map, which is really nice. And since it locates me in Italy, it already starts in Italy, but I'm not in Terni. I'm not here. I'm actually living in Rome. So I'm going to put it in Rome and then I'm going to increase and I'm going to go, oops, sorry for that. I'm going to go closer home. Uh, not going to be super precise, uh, but you can be very, very precise. And actually, this is almost where I live. I mean, I can go even further down and I can go here and that's basically where I live. Yeah. So now having done this, you can save. You're saving the location. You want to go and add a practice. So let's go. Okay. So the practice I'm going to save is about warm bin composting. So uh, I'm going to call it like this. I have a photo. Yes, here it is. I'm going to add it. <clears throat> and then I can go to next. Okay, so now it's loading the next part. And as I said, not all the fields are mandatory. So we're going to try to keep it simple, but you can really go deep and provide as lo a lot of information. And remember, you can do that in different languages. Here's, uh, you can swap language. It doesn't need to be in English. Uh, you have four languages. Okay, so is it on farm? No, it's not on farm because I don't own a farm. I have a little description. I'm going to copy paste it. Okay, here it is. All right, and then I'm not going to bother saying what is the type of agroecological practice. And you can see there's little descriptions here that explain a bit the rationale for these questions. This is not mandatory, so I'm not going to uh, input this. There's also implementing the practice. How do you prepare it? You know, and you can even say how big the area where you practice is. Um, uh, you know, you can choose a unit of measure, you, you know, and you can also, uh, and then you can increase the number or decrease the numbers. Um, and uh, there's a number of questions like, is it a substitution for a less ecological alternative? Yes, no, I'm not sure. Um, and ooh, what do you use and, and what do you expect on this practice? Okay, so let's go ahead and see the next part. This is really interesting. And you can see here it says, if you don't want to fill everything now, and this applies to every single section, you, you can just save or you can say next and save, and you can fill in the other parts later. But here, uh, you know, it's really interesting because this is uh, talking about the agricultural principles that you think are involved in what you do. So, okay, I'm going to say certainly recycling, soil health, and maybe just contributing to biodiversity. I don't know, maybe not. Um, and then, uh, okay, I think that's about it. And then what food systems and components are addressed in this uh, in this job, okay, in this work? Uh, certainly soil, which I'm doing compost, um, and probably crops because we're, well, I'm going to use the compost for other things. Okay, all right, so then we go uh, ahead and Oh, there's a bit about the performance here. I think it's very effective. Oh, sorry for that. Very effective. I'm not going to put any details here. Um, unintended positive side effects. Uh, yes, I think there are positive side effects. Um, yeah, like, I don't know, there's improved uh, soil quality uh, and so forth. Um, mm. Unintended negative side effects. Um, yes, there are some intent. Uh, I think there's, uh, you know, 
mm, I, doing compost is a bit complicated. Um, I don't know, something like this. Uh, it's important to experiment, blah, blah, blah. Um, knowledge and skills, no, not, not very, I would say, no specialized knowledge. You just have the worms you put in the, the waste. Um, labor, very little, low labor. You just need to clean it a bit. Uh, costs associated, very low costs. And does it work in degraded environments? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, does it help restore land? I assume so, but I um, don't really do it for that. Um, climate change, I have no clue, uh, but I guess uh, it does contribute positively. Time requirement, very little, but uh, works rather rapidly. Okay, and then you click next. And okay, what is the knowledge? I think it's personal experimentation. Time, knowledge timing, yeah, I've done it just recently. Not. I don't do it since a lot of time. Uptake motivation, I don't know, something like improve my uh, lifestyle. And knowledge products, uh, yeah, there's probably plenty of documents that um, you know that talk about compost, but um, I, I don't have anything to share here. But you can add documents. So you can do an online search and add stuff. Save, and here we are. Uh, my worm bin composting has been added to the 1 million voices of agroecology and I also want to see it on the map. So, okay. And note that you can add comments now. I'm not going to comment myself, but you can add comments to others people, uh, other people's entries. And that's how you also engage. And you can see you can add a document. So if you have like a publication or uh, some manuals, you add, you can add more photos. And this is the summary of all the information that uh, we have put. So what do you do, the characterization, the evaluation. You can, when you do a search, you can filter through all of these elements to uh, search for things that you, uh, that you look for based on specific criteria. Okay, acknowledgements, gallery, documents. And, but I wanna see it on the map. So I'm gonna go to the map and ta-da, here it is. I'm here and you can click on it and my terrace is here and I can click on here and it, sh it says where it, are, where it is and of course I can delete it because I own this thing but other people cannot delete it and uh, so let's look at uh, the practices there's only one practice I do on my terrace and it's the warm bin composting so um, I hope you are going to practice and use this and uh, enjoy it uh, and discover a lot of different uh, agroecological um, initiatives across the globe. We are looking for um, a lot of contributions in the coming weeks and months. And uh, yeah, this is in a nutshell how this thing works. I hope you found this video interesting. Goodbye. To a tutorial about the... Thank you very much, Fabio. Um, I certainly found it interesting and inspiring, and I hope the participants did as well. I think that was a really nice way of showing how the tool works in practice. Um, now, I would really like to, again, ask all of you to also get on the platform, see what, what works for you, get back to us with feedback, and please do continue asking questions or making comments in the Q&A section. We're trying to answer as many of them as possible. In the meantime, if you click on answered, you will see the ones that we have answered already, and some of them are um, getting to, to similar points. So we're, all of the panelists are, are invited to kindly answer as many questions as possible, and I hope in the end we also have a bit of time for, for actual live discussion. But before that, I would really like to hear from three of the key partners that we've had before then also engaging with the agroecology map in the earlier phases also of the development. And these partners are well embedded with farmers and communities on the ground and were so instrumental in, in shaping this tool with us and hopefully also enrolling it out and getting the most for farmers around the world out of it. So I would like to first introduce to you Sergio Ivan Larea Macias, a facilitator for the Andes community of practice, practice of the McKnight Foundation's um, collaborative crop research program or CCRP or Programa Colaborativo de Investigación sobre Cultivos in Spanish. Ivan, uh, Sergio Ivan, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Matias. I'm very good at Spanish. <laughs> I will try to do my best in English. 
And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sergio Larroya. I'm the facilitator of the Magnite Community of Practice in the Andes, South America, and specifically in Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. And in the last year, I conducted a fascinating process of consultation with key stakeholders in this community and other key stakeholders in South America. You know? For example, agroecological movements, NGOs, farmers' organizations. And the main question was, was how to apply citizen science in the local and regional processes in favor of agroecology. And many challenges were identified, um, how to integrate local knowledge with science, how to integrate local processes with global processes, and how to deal with the complexity of the agroecological movements. You know? It's not only flowers, it's also, there are also contradictions. You know? But actually, uh, they could see many opportunities with the citizen science tools, and also many of them were already applying uh, applying them now. So after that, this uh, international process or uh, the worldwide process was also very fa uh, uh, fascinating. You know, how to build a platform that could uh, equilibrate uh, the local interest and the global interest. You know? And I think uh, the main result, this platform, it's very encouraging. You know? I think the platform, it's very simple, but very strong. It allows interactions. Uh, it allows to share experience, not only uh, between farmers. No, I think the most important uh, is to consider that agroecological movements, it's very complex, and we have many stakeholders there, scientists, technicians, farmers, policymakers, and uh, the main strength in the future is how to help them to interact. You know? And I think uh, the platform will allow it. You know? uh, I, can, I, I think also that it could be very relevant at the local level. You know? uh, Lisa uh, asked for a call for action. And in this region, we are going to try now to, uh, to test and to pilot this platform at the local level and to allow to interact uh, at the local level many stakeholders you know, and to, uh, to help them to use the tool and also to integrate and other platforms that are also already using uh, at the local level. So I don't want to talk too much. I want to say that uh, I am very fascinated with this process uh, to, uh, and the, the vision for the future is how to strain these movements uh, for the uh, in favor of agroecology. So thank you. Um, I invite you, all the participants here in this uh, webinar, to try the, the platform no? and to, sh uh, to help us with uh, suggestions and comments. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Sergio. Gracias, eh, Matías. Un placer tenerte aquí y espero que podamos profundizar aún mucho más esta colaboración. Thank you very much, Sergio. Um, that was really exciting. And I think you've addressed many of the questions that are also arising in the Q&A in, in just these few very important words in terms of how such a digital platform can engage with local communities and what the value might be for farmers to, to participate in such knowledge sharing. Thank you very much for that. Next, I would like to hear from Irish Bagrilat um, that um, Fergus already mentioned in the very beginning. AFA, um, one of the largest farmer associations in the world and um, a key player in making agroecology the new normal around the world. So please go ahead, Irish. Looking forward to hearing from you. Yes, uh, thank you, Matthias. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the participants. Uh, greetings from uh, the Philippines. So it's it's really, uh, uh, I join my, my colleagues who express the, the excitement and the delight that uh, uh, today we are uh, launching this uh, digital tool which we have uh, conceptualized, co conceptualized uh, and had gone through uh, a long uh, process. So as mentioned, I'm Iris and I'm uh, here representing uh, AFA or Asian Farmers Association for Sustainable Rural Development, a regional network of uh, 20 national farmers organization in 16 countries composed of a small scale women, men uh, producers uh, who are engaged in crops, livestock, fisheries, for forestry, herding, and pastoralism. So AFA has a sixth agenda, and, and one of our um, agenda is to produce 
diverse and nutritious food through agroecological farming systems in farms and forested uh, landscapes. So this is one of our uh, priority agenda and basis of um, unity. And we also uh, believe in AFA that agroecology is an enabler uh, for local level uh, adaptation. So when the idea was uh, proposed by uh, Michelle, as mentioned uh, by Fergus and, um, and Lisa, to, to co-design a citizen science uh, project uh, for agroecology, we saw that this is an important opportunity uh, because uh, for us, it can give voice to smallholder farmers who are producing food in an agroecological manner, and that um, this is an opportunity uh, to, to show the, the support uh, that uh, are needed by uh, these smallholder uh, farmers. And uh, we also see that uh, the citizen science uh, project is, um, I mean, this initiative is uh, one way to recognize that uh, small scale farmers are not uh, only food producers, but are actually producers and holders of, of knowledge, knowledge that is valid and uh, knowledge that complements um, what is being produced by scientists and, and researchers. And uh, of course, um, we, we saw that uh, this citizen science project is, is a platform to, to co innovate uh, and do uh, core research. Uh, and um, uh, the reality is we are uh, in, you know, we, we are in a hotter climate and it cannot be business as usual. So co-innovation is uh, much needed for us uh, farmers, smallholder farmers to continue producing diverse food while also restoring degraded natural resources and uh, addressing climate change impact. So in last year, in mid 2022, uh, we have convened series of consultation to collectively identify possible focus areas for this citizen science project. So we uh, we convened our members and also our CSO uh, partners, and we have discussed what are the possible uh, goals, possible objectives, and importantly, uh, what are the uh, information or data that uh, farmers would be able to collect and contribute to, you know, to promote uh, agroecology. And Lisa already mentioned some of the topics that uh, came out of those consultations. So again, um, we, we are happy that uh, after going through a, a long process, we are now uh, finally launching the, the digital tool. And as mentioned by Sergio, we also we see that this tool really will help bridge interaction among smallholder farmers, consumers, researchers across regions, across country, and hopefully it will increase the support uh, needed by farmers who wanted to transition to um, agroecology. Uh, while we recognize that access to digital tools and connectivity remain to be a challenge in rural areas in our region, AFA is committed to uh, find ways and uh, support our members and partners to take part in this uh, citizen science uh, project or initiative. So we invite you to check the site and hopefully you can promote this to your members, network and partners. Thank you and back to you, Mercedes. Thank you so much, Irish. And um, indeed you managed to, once again, just like said, you also address several of the key questions that are arising in the Q&A. And I think really of crucial importance is how such a digital tool can complement other approaches for engaging with farmers on co-creation of knowledge, sharing knowledge. It's it's not a one size fits all solution, and it certainly shouldn't replace all of the wonderful in-person activities that are going on on the ground, but connecting them. And I think such wonderful organizations like AFA can really build that bridge between the, the different um, complementary aspects of that. Now, next, we have the pleasure to hear from Swati Rindu Pintala. Um, I always try a different version of pronouncing your last name, Swati. Uh, <laughs> so very well. But he does work with C4 ECRAF, uh, including on a number of agroecology projects. She is also doing a PhD at Benga University. But above all, she has been working with what is often called the largest agroecology initiative in the world, Andhra Pradesh um, Community Managed Natural Farming um, by the OISS. So please, Swati, the floor is yours. Let us hear a bit uh, about your ideas about citizen science and what such a digital, digital platform can contribute to it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, namaste, everyone. Uh, thank, uh, my name is Swati. Um, so this this entire journey of of uh, exploring uh, 
the citizen science and what exactly it means took us to a rabbit's hole because uh, the the kind of uh, interaction that we had of stakeholders not just in andhra pradesh across the country uh, it led to a very important question the advent of technology and communication in in india has been immense so there is a spurt of citizen science initiatives across the country and there is permutation of ict there is technology and india is one of the it hubs while that is there still this exists that science is elitist in nature currently you know and and it is held by by certain uh, prestigious institutions across the country and majority of the country is uh, away from the mainstream science and there is a uh, and it was observed that there is a strong colonial dominance that has been observed and also what we have realized is that there are two citizen science initiatives in the in 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 india we have we have observed one is the citizen science and then there is a people science that has emerged so the citizen science is majorly you know that the, the the initiatives like biodiversity monitoring air and quality monitoring water quality monitoring etc while the people science is basically something that is being in, in india especially uh, the voices from 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 the communities so there is uh, different elements of natural farming organic farming you know there is honey bee networks there is millets millets have really uh, emerged as movements in in community so these two exist this two dual paradigm has has exist in in, in india so these dialogues have led us to uh, realize that there is a one dimensional strategy and while this exists there is not much focus on soil and water dimensions the practices dimensions the wisdom of community that is integrated to agroecology is missing among among in, in in the narrative of the citizen science and the mainstream science itself so further started this entire uh, 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 this workshop uh, this is a seven webinar by asking who science matters really so in this context we realized that the andhra pradesh community managed natural farming which uh, mathias uh, uh, has mentioned that at times has been called the largest agroecological program in the world we want to take we want to also ask the same questions who science is mattering in india especially agroecology or natural farming or its variants are seen as mythical or anecdotal in nature while the farmers are practicing on field there is enough evidence that's coming up but if the mainstream agriculture um, uh, 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 institutions are not acknowledging it do we really say that these are, this is not science so this is a questions we are we are trying to uh, really address and this platform that we are going we are seeing today is one of one of the major voices that would emerge to bring the focus of citizen science among in, in agroecology right now it is really restricted to an urban population but how do you have the rural voices and the community of practitioners the farmers into mainstream citizen science narrative is what is critical we in andhra pradesh uh, find uh, this this platform this uh, 1 million initiative platform extremely crucial is because we have started the farmer scientist initiative where we are saying in, in the next 5 years we'll have 10000 natural farming champions who would undergo and become scientist in 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 true sense so they they are these are you know semi literate or literate rural communities who have done practicing as practitioners of agroecology and natural farming and they become science scientists and they hold science among their rural communities so we want to take this platform because it's very crucial to bring 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 this knowledge uh, instruments into their hand and start with what uh, fabio has mentioned that documenting these narratives documenting the practices because the complexities of agroecology and agriculture are so immense that we need to uh, we need several platforms uh, uh, the tpp uh, the million voices platform included into into mainstream uh, agroecology narrative so we are very much excited and we see immense potential of documenting the agri agroecology practices starting right now then have pest surveillance then have water surveillance then have soil so the we have the scope is immense and we have just begun thank you so much 
Thank you so much, Swati. As usual, extremely exciting to listen to you. And it always makes me feel like moving to Andhra Pradesh and um, getting out of the office and on the farm. So thank you very much for that. Um, now we have some time for answering um, or posing some of the key questions that have arisen in the chat already to, to the panelists. Please do continue posing questions. We'll try to answer as many in written and orally as possible, but of course, time is short and i think really crucial to 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 this whole platform and initiative is not just that um farmers can share evidence and experience about practices but also that it connects people and i'm for that case i'm particularly happy to see that in the case of um cambodia just on the q a panel two two people have found each other already both working on agroecology in cambodia and now ex exchanging um their contacts please also for anyone of you we've we've had questions from northeastern india from assam state in terms of what sort of initiatives projects are going on in your region if you look at the agroecology map, you will find quite a lot about this already in terms of where, who is practicing agroecology where. But you can also always at any moment reach out to us, agroecology slash um, dash tpp at c4acraft.org, and we'd be happy to connect you to the best of our knowledge to ongoing projects, initiatives, farmer movements, whatever there might be out there. And I think the more we collaborate, the more we can achieve together for a better planet and better health and better nutrition for all of us. So let's start with some of the first questions. Really crucial. And I think we've we've heard a bit about it um, already also in the response from um, Irish and from, from Sergio. But nonetheless, I would give it again to, um, to all of the panelists in terms of what value has such a digital platform for agroecological citizen science for farmers who hardly have any internet or no internet at all. Maybe there's some initial reflections from any of your panelists that you would like to share with the audience. Please go ahead. Uh, so, Matthias, so go ahead, Irish. Perhaps you, you want to start and after I can. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Matthias, and thank you, Sergio. So, yeah, uh, for us, uh, as I have uh, mentioned, um, AFAM is a regional network. Our members are national farmers organization and uh, cooperatives, and their members are um, either local or subnational organization. And um, uh, in parallel to the citizen science uh, project, uh, we also uh, we are part of uh, collective action. Uh, on digital agriculture um, and this collective action on uh, inclusive dig digital agriculture allowed us to do a survey you know, among our members um, how interested they are to, to explore um, uh, what is out there, what are the digital tools that are appropriate to um, to smallholder farmers. And uh, one of uh, the interesting results that, that came out is that um, many of our um, our uh, members are already you know, using um, uh, smartphones. They are actually uh, making use of uh, smartphones to, you know, to um, to access uh, services, you no know, financial services, um, and also access um, information. And also, we found out that many um, or some of our uh, members who are cooperatives are already uh, making use of, of digital tools. So, so I think uh, what, what I see here is that um, we can actually uh, reach out to, to our members or to the farmers who don't have access uh, to digital tools through the cooperatives and through the organizations who has uh, the, the capacity you know, to, to disseminate uh, the, the information. So uh, we, we uh, uh, for us um, we we build the capacity of uh, farm farmers organization and uh, cooperatives so they can better serve their members including access no to to digital tools and information so I think there are uh, we also discussed no how how we can make this uh, digital tool available and uh, there are ways uh, there are ways that we can do that uh, for example in India our member sewa uh, they have clustered you no know, their members who don't have access to uh, for example uh, digital information or digital tools and then they have a master trainer who has uh, who can provide no uh, access to uh, digital tools or uh, uh, digital um, 
information. So yeah, those are some of the practical ways I think that we can reach to uh, uh, smallholder farmers who don't have access to uh, uh, tools and connectivity. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, Please go ahead. No, so, go ahead, sir. A few thoughts about it, you know. A week ago, I, I was with my father in his little town in Bolivia, you know, and I had some troubles with my phone. And I really I asked for help with a, uh, for a young uh, farmer, a very young farmer. It was an expert with the mobile, you know, with the with with the phone, you no. Know? So I think in general, actually in the Andes, we can have very good links between new generations uh, that um, perhaps they are uh, going to live in cities and maintain their links with uh, their own community, you no. Know? Uh, so there are very nice challenges, even for consumers. And uh, an example in Peru uh, with Agu Aguapan, it's an association who is selling uh, native uh, potatoes. And we are uh, having very nice linking uh, links between these young people in Lima, in the capital city, and their own communities. And they are using phones. No, in Bolivia, uh, 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 farmers are using their phones uh, to interact with agro meteorological uh, data. No, so I think uh, there are good opportunities to understand the use of these uh, technologies and to link the young ones uh, in this. Go ahead, Matthias. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sergio. And I think you, you really make for a very important point how this can bridge generational um, divides to some degree. Is there anybody else who, who would like to comment on that question on how the digital platform interacts with the less digital um, real life soil plant um, human world that we that we're all fascinated by maybe swati or anybody else would, would like to jump in i think lisa is asking for a... yeah. you might not be ah, able sorry to i didn't yes. go ahead no, lisa i think thank you thank you for the question i i briefly looked into the q a and then got overwhelmed because it was so interesting to listen to contributions that i could not handle everything at the same time and we fully share, like us on the team, we fully share the concern and the attention that is brought to that question. It has been a fundamental question that we have discussed up and down as a team. We have highlighted in so many different ways. It is a, a fundamental question also in the global review to really understand what are the limitations and what are the promises of using different kinds of tools, different kinds of methods. We have really built on vast experience of the various networks and Perhaps and and many important points have already been mentioned, but I think from from our perhaps project management perspective, if you will, um, that was a main reason why we really decided to look for and actively work with and really ensure that it is not just that we are developing a tool somewhere that we think is great and then try to disseminate. It is an entire co-creation process. It has been. And also in the context of, um, of citizen science, there's like a specific language about, about whether it's contributory, whether it's participatory, whether it's co-creation. But we have really targeted a full co-creation cycle from the beginning in terms of who, are, who is participating in defining priorities for the initiative, how are research questions being identified, how, are they, how, how is the prioritization being done, how is it being developed? who is developing it like who are the so we we have had this very inclusive process throughout time because the idea really is that whoever has an interest and all of us are extremely interested all of us have different skills we all are interested in using our different skills our different experiences our different knowledge about these questions to ensure that it's a useful platform um so really building on these very strong partnerships has been fundamental for the process. And as, as has been mentioned by many of the contributors before as well, we are con continuously looking for more inspiration for other ways of doing it. How, what can we do? We are working on, on the phone application, yes, that also has an offline mode, yes. We are working on um, versions in different languages. By now, I think four languages are live, but we are very happy to propose any other language and nowadays there are so many beautiful tools to translate things like as we know like through ai or, or similar tools but we'd be very happy if any of the participants today would like the the, the platform to exist in their language please come forward we can we can propose something please help us to improve the translation so that it says the appropriate things and then it can go live absolutely so there's a lot of like continuous reflection about this thank you
And I see, Fergus, you also would like to chip in. I think this, this point is of crucial importance. So maybe we just hear from Fergus and then we have a look at another question. Please go ahead, Fergus. No, I think it's fundamental. Um, because if you're going to be uh, bottom up, then uh, you know you need to uh, ensure that people can be taking part in something um, regardless of their relationship to any particular technology. And of course, I think the way that you handle that is through people. So, um, uh, I you know, and I I really do think there's a sort of leapfrogging issue here. Um, I'm always um, amazed by the fact that um, uh, in many contexts, Andhra Pradesh would would be one. The farmers are far more uh, savvy with their mobile phones than than I am. Um, and and uh, there's a huge sort of connectivity going on. Kenya was the first country that had mobile money, you know, through, through uh, you know, that was an African innovation. So, so I think, I think, you know, we shouldn't, we need to be careful here that we don't get it the wrong way around. Yeah. It seems to me that some of these innovations are being driven by the needs of uh, people at a, at a very local level. And, and what we need to make sure is that, that everybody can be included and where, people um, um, don't have individual access to these things, then again, it can be done in a sort of community way. So I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a matter of making uh, the most of things. And, and then perhaps the biggest question for us, and I think it's a big one, is it's very clear to, to you know, those of us who are working you know, globally what the value of connecting things amongst many different people is, right? So if we look across a lot of different um, circumstances, we, we can begin to see patterns and, and, and we, we, we can uh, begin to draw um, uh, interesting conclusions about what's happening. But it's a very important issue. What does people who contribute information locally to a, a central uh, repository, what do they get back that's valuable to them? Is it is it of value to them to be engaged in something which um, uh, it, you know p- uh, has a, 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 an ability to to then you know create conclusions from big data? And I think that is something that we need to really monitor. Is is um, to what extent are people getting something back from what they from what they put in, and is it adequate? And is 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 because um, because the last thing that we want to be is extractive. It needs to be, and I would imagine with all the connections that are possible through an app like this, um, people can connect with each other and get things. <laughs> uh, information, uh, exchanging experience. Um, uh, so, so there is something that, that is important to them. But but I think we need to keep a very, and, and we also need to document it very clearly so, so that we can say, yes, um, people are gaining something from this um, rather than uh, just assuming it. Thanks. Thank you very much, Fergus. And I think this is, this is so true. And um, Partially, you've addressed one of the other questions that came over and over again. What is the incentives for farmers to share knowledge? And I would really like for the panelists to reflect a bit on that. Um, I think we've addressed it partially already that it's not just about sharing knowledge. It's also about receiving knowledge. It's also about networking. It's also about um, learning from one another's experience. And you give and you take, I think, in this world. But nonetheless, Indeed, if, if you come up with a really nice, locally relevant innovation, why, why would you share it? What I think many of us are farmers in, in at least in our private life. I unfortunately can't dedicate as much time to it as I would like to. But from my personal perspective, if I find out something nice, I, w- I would be happy to share it with any like-minded individual. But I would be happy to hear a bit from the individual, um, from the panelists, what your thoughts are on this matter. The farmers you work with, do you think that they're, they're interested in sharing or are they not? What might be incentives for them to do so? Just a couple of words from, from everyone would be very much appreciated. Please go ahead. Yeah, so. Go ahead, Lisa, yeah. 
Sorry, no, I'm seeing Swati wants to speak. I, I was recommending that after Swati speaks, perhaps we can ask Marcelo to speak a bit about their recent reflection they have undertaken. Because interestingly, when we started working with, with the team from Agroecology Map, they actually told us, you know what, we have been undergoing this reflection process to really understand people's motivation for using tools such as ours. So the fact that they have years of experience building a platform and then really engaged in this very deliberate process to understand why people do what they do in interaction with these platforms, I think can be a very meaningful um, for us to hear. But Swati. Great. Please go ahead, Swati. And then indeed, Thank you. must please do, do share your thoughts. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Lisa. I think this is a very relevant question. Even we have reflected over the passage of the last few months on what is relevant of a farmers, what incentive, you know, uh, but as Agro, uh, as a program who is implementing agroecology, we do not believe in incentivizing or subsidizing for any kind of transformation. So that is the first thing. So uh, we believe that the transformation is crucial for, for a variety of reasons. So um, uh, while, while I do understand, you know, we always think what is the incentive of a farmer, uh, the virtue of agroecology is bringing the wisdom of communities at the at, at, at the center and which which has been neglected by the conventional industrialized farming system that's our belief so this knowledge and wisdom needs to be documented now uh, this is one of the platform that helps us in documenting because the principles might be universal in nature but the complexities and diversity of agriculture is so immense especially in the context of andhra pradesh or india that it is very crucial for us to documenting of these uh, these practices by by communities and uh, this is crucial and incentivizing is that incentive need not always be economic in, in or, or in, in monetary sense the incentive of sharing of knowledge Learning from each other is much beyond uh, just an economic incentive. That that is that is a stance we take, at least from the AP perspective. So. Thank you very much, um, Swati. Marcelo, would you like to share a bit your thoughts that uh, came, yeah. came up during your recent reflection? May I just ask you to speak a bit slowly? We were we were having trouble with the English Spanish translation, um, or in, I think it was English French. Otherwise, I think you could speak in in Portuguese or Spanish and make it easier. But um, okay. please, just go ahead. Just try to slow down a bit. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I speak a. Uh, very quickly when I'm nervous, but uh, my, 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 my reflections is, is, is come back to, 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 to 2017, when, when we started the AgroCos map as a, a, a local platform. It's, it's not a, at first, it's, it was the map of the agroecology. It's, 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 a, 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 it's a platform just to solve, just to, to, to answer some questions in Brazil, and we expanded this this, this idea to, to, to the world. But uh, when we presented the agriculture map seven years ago, many peoples, for the small farmers and uh, peasants and indigenous people, ask us, why should I put my data? Why should I give you my data, my experience, my knowledge to, to your platform? And, and a lot of people, I, asking us about this, why should I put, uh, what I get with this. And it, it's, it, to answer these questions is, is still a challenge because uh, we're trying to figure out how how we can give back something. We're trying to, 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 to better understand what, what we can do for, for, for all these, these, these farmers and, and campesinos, campesinas, indigenous, how we can help them to, to, to improve their lives. And I, I, I think, it's a personal thought, we, we, we can help straighten fires between the communities, between these groups. We can, we can put them on the map. It's, it's something uh, it's something very real that the, the, the small farmer who produces 17, 18 percent of our food we eat is, is invisible in the map, in the geographical, in the geopolitical map. And I, I think we can help them to put them on the map. They can see them, they can show them in the map, in the, 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 in, the, 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 the in this discussion. Because we know the agriculture is not a technical thing, it's a political, it's a social thing. It's, it's, it's something we, we need hours to, 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 
pure eyes, I believe. And and I think we, we what we we can give him back to, 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 to all who try we, we use all platforms and share with that is is give respect, is given uh, information, is given this sense of of being part of something. We can we try to to to, to, to improve the quality of life, the improve the technology and try to, to incentivize to, 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 to share more knowledge because it's a good thing to share. And I believe it's it's, it's, it's main goal with the map, with the Grow College map among you know, both platforms is to, to to help them to share information, to share data, to share technology and they, it, it put them in the map and show I'm here, I'm doing this, I'm I'm important. What I, I do is matter and I want to, to show what, what I do and I want to, to share and I want to, 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 to improve this community, this, 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 this idea of agroecology. It's, it's agroecology is community, agroecology is sharing, agroecology is about to give and, 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 and being seen. And I, I believe it's, 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 it's not the, the final answer for these questions is a for me is a challenge I, i'm not a researcher i'm not a, a farmer I, i'm not a peasant and, and try to, to figure out how, how i can help because i believe this is the way this is the, the path to improve the, the the world is a path to improve the life of so many people and and that's it man. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Um, and I see Eduardo, you would like to, to um, add to that? Yes. And Matthias, a few words after that. Okay. So, well, my name is Eduardo. Uh, I am from the Agroecology Map too. And uh, I would like to, to complement maybe something. The first thing is about the previous question. Oh, but the people will use the tool or not. Some of them don't, don't like technology. Some of them don't have access. Yes. Uh, some people will use, some people will not use. Some people have the tools, but don't wanna to share the data. Some people, the question is, you need to have a platform, you need to have a tool for the people who can share, who want to share the data. So we need to, uh, to share and spread and have an easy to use tool. So the people will start to share the data. Uh, in general, um, people who work with agroecology loves to share at least in Brazil, they love to share, they love to learn, they need knowledge. And one of the things is that sometimes they don't know where are the knowledge, who is doing something similar to what I wanna do. Uh, a lot of knowledge is in the books, is spread in the web. So, one of our points when we started that project was to organize this knowledge and connect people, connect information. And, but one of the, now coming back to the, 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 the last question. In Brazil, we have one of the, I don't know if it's the first one, but be um what's the word do something we have life risk here real life life risk a lot of people are really dead every year um the activists and some some people said i don't wanna that you point my place in a map because 
the the guys who wanna they they don't they just don't wanna to be um, localized. It. It's a real question. It's a, it's an important question, and some of them just do not point. And we have some general uh, localization. Uh, we do something like that, but just a point here. In a general way, I think Marcelo, but it's the, the, the main point. We, we need to have a place. We need to integrate the different platforms. One of the, our main concerns here is just this, oh, okay, we have the, this one million map, fine, it's similar to agroecology map, but we, they are not the same. Let's, let's work together, let's increase, let's improve all that we have, all that we can. So the main points, the people need to find other people. They need to find the knowledge. Um, they have risks, okay? But if you just be quiet, you don't change. You don't change the things, you don't change the planet. So a lot of people decided to, to share and to say, hey, I am here, I am doing this. And they're proud of share their, their knowledge and their, their goals and their gains, their, their results too. And yes, uh, just one last point. Um, today, we are showing here a first step but we have a lot of space to grow. So um, you can have like forums, you can have another ways of interaction, you can um, organize um, events, you can organize data and books and PDFs and a lot of things. So you need to build this collectively and collaboratively, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that's all. Thank you. We are here. We are here to work. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Eduardo. And I think that's indeed what agroecology is all about. And I, I think you know, I always teach my little kids sharing is caring. And I think um, we don't need to sit and teach that to farmers. We rather need to teach that to scientists, to private sector entities. Farmers are probably more likely to share knowledge and information than many others. Sergio, you would like to um, have a few words and then no um, we're, we're just slightly be behind time. Um, yes. But I think this discussion is so interesting. So please hear and let's hear from you, Sergio. Please go ahead. Just one minute for hearing you now. I'm very inspired and I'm better understanding the use for, uh, of this platform. No? At the heart is to connect experience and people. And how we, uh, farmers, uh, scientists want recognition. It's, it's good to be recognized by the work as, as farmer, as a scientist, as researcher, but also to have a feeling of community. You know? And the other is uh, where to go, a dream. You know? So we are connecting people and experience by uh, giving a feeling of community, the recognition, and a dream where to go. That's all. Thank you so much, Sergio. And uh, I think this connects so nicely to where Lisa also started in terms of let's dream and let's make the dream reality. Um, I would like to, if that's possible, give just before Manfred um, gives us his closing remarks here from Peter Goebbels, um, one of our uh, the representative of one of our key partners, Groundswell International in West Africa, and director for action research and advocacy. So really key to, to what we're doing here as well. And Peter, you've mentioned something extremely important in the Q&A about um, how much of agroecology can be covered on the on the farm plot level versus the landscape level? So, Peter, if you are able to to unmute and speak, I would be happy to to hear a bit from you your own reflections on that question, and then maybe just one or two short points from the other panelists. 
Uh, thank you, Matthias. Um, just very briefly, because I know we're at the end. Um, it seems to me as I go through this very well-designed tool that it's mostly around the farm level and interchange with farmers. And if we want to be true to the, all the principles of agroecology and the different phases and levels of agroecology, we have to look at the food system. And in particular in Africa, we have high levels of malnutrition and um, sustainable healthy diets are very important. Territorial markets are very important. And then of course, uh, land restoration and land degradation is huge. That goes beyond the farm level and needs community level um, collective action. And those dimensions, quite frankly, from what I saw of the tool that was displayed during this meeting, doesn't seem to take on board some of those wider dimensions, which I think are essential for agroecology and also for climate change uh, adaptation. So I just wanted to make a suggestion, or at least from my initial um, review, uh, or review is too strong a word, but exposure to the tool, that, that might be something you might want to consider. Maybe that needs a separate tool, I don't know, but um, and maybe it's different audiences, but uh, I just wanted to make that remark. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Peter. And I see Lisa would like to respond right away. Um, I think you're fully right. Agroecological transitions don't just happen on a single farm. They happen on a, on a broader scale. And we do need to take all of these factors into account. What we can cover with a single tool is one question. It's always complementary to other things. And But I think you do have a point. We could include in, in this module a question of like, what other factors hold you back from, from getting the most out of this agroecological practice, for instance. But Lisa, I think you've, you've uh, probably have much more elaborated thoughts on that than I do. So please go ahead. Sure, but uh, thank you. I'll try to be very brief just to say, it is definitely something that we have been considering, and that is very close to all of us. Um, all of the members of the core team, we are all very aware and, and really pay a lot of attention to the social dimension of agroecology and continuously had this conversation about how we can ensure that it is meaningful beyond the practice, the, the on-farm practice level and beyond the private farm level. And we deliberately phrased some of the input modes to be more open. So, for example, we will not ask people to map a farm. We'll ask them to map a location. What that location is can be different. And as we're testing, um, I saw Manfred as well. I see him smiling. But I also tested, for example, my local um, community granary. I, I entered like different kinds of, of organizing and different kinds of places that that allow for for more varied experiences, if you will. But beyond that, we are very happy about to, uh, if you test the tool further and you find um, inspiration for how we can potentially amend in, in somehow like slightly tweak the questions, we are very happy to do so. But the attention really is to allow various experience, agroecological experiences to be mapped, not only on farm, not only on private farms, not only on field. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. And um, I think this part is really cannot be stressed often and often enough. We want to continuously co-design this all together with all of you and everybody who has an interest in it. So please reach out, but please also share. But with this, I would like to hand over to Manfred Kaufmann of the Swiss Agency for Development Collaboration. Um, Manfred, I don't just see you as a donor, but also as an ally for making these things happen. But without money, it's difficult to develop such wonderful um, platforms. So thanks a lot, not only for your financial um, support, but also for your collaborative spirit. And please go ahead. Well, thank you very much, uh, Matthias, for these nice words. And it's actually my great pleasure and honor to make some concluding remarks to this um, important event. And in, I'm actually sad that I um, have to stop this discussion with these concluding remarks because I, I, I felt how, how vibrant it is. And first of all, I really want to congratulate the TPP and this, its partners to having achieved this very important milestone and for setting up the One Million Voices platform. I think what, what really transcended to all the presentations today was energy, enthusiasm, excitement, and also high expectations. And um, I look very much forward uh, for us as a, as a community to, to meet these high expectations. 
Agroecology is often characterized as as in, in its three dimensions, as a movement, as a practice, and as a science. And I think that this, this uh, new platform is really at the intersection of all these three dimensions. It, it contributes to the movement because it gives everybody a voice. Um, it allows to share the practices. It makes the practitioners also scientists by themselves. And I think it will also provide a gold mine for researchers in the TPP. Um, I hope they will stumble over new practices. It, it is a possibility to connect, and it is for sure a possibility to to embrace the the the, the, the diversity and, and and the wealth of what's going on worldwide in agroecology. Probably the word which I heard most today was co-creation. And I think that's really at the heart uh, of um, what we have tried with the One Million Voices platform. And we have also seen that the TPP partners are really committed to embrace this new paradigm of co-creation and to working in a new and more collaborative and coordinated way. And this is also why the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, my predecessor, suggested about two years ago to the TPP and also provided funding uh, to launch this One Million Voices initiative as a bold citizen science campaign to involve smallholder farmers, farm workers and consumers in generating knowledge and to accelerate and document agroecological transitions and to give them a platform and a voice. And I think ultimately the One Million Voices initiative also intends to provide evidence to support advocacy and also to inform policymakers not only about the potential of agroecological approaches, but also about the quantity, the diversity, and the wealth of farmer innovations. I don't perceive the One Million Voices platform as a one as a standalone project of the TPP. It really aims to complement the work of different initiatives and other important research in agroecology. As such, the One Million Voices platform should be seen as a linking element between the different actors and actions that are currently underway in the area of agroecology. Today, we can celebrate the launch of the One Million Voices platform that will allow everybody to share and shape this agroecological agro transition. And also the platform itself was conceptualized in the process of a co-creation, so strong involvement of regional partner organizations in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, which is in itself an important principle of agroecology. I perceive today's launch of the platform as a very important milestone, but it is at the same time only the beginning of the journey. The platform is still a, quite an empty shell that needs to be populated with contributions, and we count on all partners that they will widely share the platform and motivate their partners to contribute to make it a living space of documentation and, that's also important, interaction. Or to use an agroecological metaphor, let's prepare the soil to make sure that this platform will fall on fertile ground and will grow organically over time. So let us work together to build a vibrant citizen science movement for agroecology and uh, I just want to um, remember the call for action that uh, Lisa has, has issued already. Uh, so I wish us all a lot of inspiration and success along the journey in this collective effort. And I would like to thank everybody for their contributions. Thank you and over to Matthias again. Thank you so much, Manfred. Those were some of the best closing remarks I've ever heard. Um, and I think you deserve a prize for your agroecological metaphors. I continuously <laughs> am impressed by that. And uh, just to follow up also from my side, thank you very, very much, everyone. It's, it's really impressive, the work that all of you are doing. And um, thanks a lot to all the panelists, to all the participants, and above all, to all the agroecological farmers in this world. Um, I was hoping for Fabio to put on the whole um, agroecology map and not just a few ones that have been um, entered into, into the, um, uh, the, the One Million Voices Citizen Science platform, because I just 
think the agroecology map exemplifies something that matters to all of us. Um, if we want to put agroecology on the map, we need to do it ourselves. So check out the agroecology map .org. There we go. That's what I mean. And it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. I think if we believe in that, we can, we can sh really change things in this world. Viva la co-creación. Co Muchas gracias. Obrigado. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. And have a wonderful day, evening, and night ahead. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you, everybody. Gracias. Bye. Bye.